and um, we're going to jump right to Andreas um, the, from the Watershed Consulting Associates for his presentation because I think few of you here might have come specifically to hear about that. So, um, Joan, take it away. Yeah, I just had a few opening remarks so everyone knows what to expect. Um, so most of you are probably aware that there are a variety of uh, issues, problems in the village caused by stormwater runoff. And uh, stormwater runoff, as you also probably know, is anything, uh, rain or melting snow, that flows over land and eventually ends up in the streams uh, and, and rivers. And in the village, some of that runoff, uh, we're finding that a lot less than we thought, is captured by our existing storm drain system. Um, a lot of what we find is not really functioning, and um, Andres will tell us a little bit more about what they found. Um, but what eventually all of it does in one way or another, whether it flows over land or goes through our, our infrastructure, ends up in the river, and it causes, it carries sediment, it carries debris, it carries contaminants. So it's a problem for um, those of us, you know, traveling or walking in the village, but it's also a problem for terms of water quality in, in the White River and in the streams as well. And of course in the winter time what happens is that it makes for hazardous walking, uh, breaks up the sidewalks, what sidewalks we have get broken up and eroded by uh, uh, stormwater runoff, these big puddles in the warmer weather, it erodes lawns, it, you know, and other low-lying areas, it floods basements, garages, etc. You probably all know more about this than I do about what happens. Um, so a few years ago, if you remember, we did a pedestrian study uh, to give us some ideas about how to improve the walking experience in the village, but that um, did not address stormwater. And what we realized is that if we didn't resolve the stormwater issues, anything we wanted to do to improve the sidewalks was going to be sort of a waste of time that really needed to be done uh, in some integrated way. Um, so all of that is coming together with a stormwater master plan that Andres' firm, uh, Watershed Consulting uh, LLC, has been doing for us over the past several months. And uh, this is what he's going to be presenting to us tonight, describing what he's found and what the recommendations are for what we can do. And before he gets started, I just want to say thank you to Mary Russ from Viper the Partnership. Um, Mary was one who got a grant from the state uh, in order to hire Andres is firm, so at no cost to the town at all for, for this great work. And um, in addition, Ann Smith is here from, uh, used to be the executive director of Friends of the Winooski and is now uh, an independent consultant. She's got a great deal of experience doing stormwater implementation projects uh, around the state, especially in the Winooski Basin. Um, and she, through an arrangement with uh, White River Partnership, will be able to help us implement some projects going forward. Andres, would you like to take it away? Sure. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for, for having me here tonight. So I, I'm going to give an overview. I have about 17 slides, um, just focusing on the, kind of describing, talking through the process of what we did, and then um, the findings and the next steps of the process. And so um, kind of launch right into that. I'm going to be describing kind of what the you know what the means of the project is, uh, and then basically the way we do these projects is we're narrowing them down. So we're starting with you know looking at what is this, the the site area, uh, defining our site area, and then focusing down in terms of what are really the biggest problems in terms of runoff and and how do we go about solving those problems, and <clears throat> and so uh, kind of to take you through that the. The master plan, um, as uh, in our intro we just heard, the, the, the master plan was developed uh, by Watershed Consulting. It was, uh, we were contracted um, by the White River Partnership to do the work. And basically it's been, about a, it's been about a year, I think we started in last January. And this was through a grant um, from the Vermont uh, Department of Environmental Conservation we're doing this work. And, you know, why is this important, really? I mean, the stormwater, um, I, I probably don't need to tell a lot of you, obviously there's history of flooding 
stormwater is definitely a big part of that flooding. Um, the reason um, that the flooding was so s severe in a lot of cases is because there is a lot of uncontrolled stormwater runoff that's being kind of delivered from the, the hard surfaces in town, brought right down to the river quickly. Um, also, you know, that water creating a lot of erosion in the stream, destabilizing the stream. And so one of the reasons why we're doing this is flooding, um, to mit try to mitigate some of those flooding impacts. The second reason is um, uh, for pollutant reasons, for water quality reasons. So stormwater runoff, when exposed to developed lands, like a lot of the lands we have in the village here, picks up pollutants, and those pollutants get washed down into the stream and degrade the water quality. It also <coughs> heats up the water. And so it not only affects the quality of the water um, for things like swimming and fishing, it also um, affects what can live in the stream. <coughs> and so the water quality piece is the other big piece of why we're doing this. And so this is, uh, this is, part, this is really going to be part of the overall White River Tactical Basin Plan, which I'm sure Mary can talk more about. But this is really one piece in this larger this larger plan, this larger effort to kind of protect and restore uh, the White River watershed. And uh, well, we're in the White River watershed, and really the White River watershed, uh, you know, just some of the stressors in the watershed, it's been, you know, there's been subject to straightening the river. Uh, there's been encroachment, you know, the encroachment meaning the development that's kind of right on the river. Um, historically, a lot of the Vermont towns were settled this way. There's a lot of encroachment. And there's uh, erosion, uh, land erosion kind of into the river and then also channel erosion as well, where there's banks being scoured out. A lot of that is due to this encroachment. It's also just due to the fact that there's stormwater runoff. So I was saying a lot of this runoff getting into the river quickly, it has a lot of power and it tends to erode the banks and cause that destabilization. That creates a lot of problems for water quality and also for, um, for the, the infrastructure that the town has to maintain over time. Invasive species, there's definitely invasive species issues as well in the watershed. We see that uh, down at the, the town garage site. Um, and then just some of the other stressors in the stream currently, there's pathogens and thermal stress. And so pathogens are things, bacteria that are, um, again, from stormwater runoff. When you're getting uh, runoff from developed lands, a lot of times that water can be contaminated with things like pet waste and grease from restaurants, stuff like that. Um, so that uh, dumps pathogens in the water and that can make people or animals sick. And then thermal stress, when that water uh, is heating up on the impervious surfaces, you know, imagine this hot summer day thunderstorm, that water just rushing right out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really warm and that is very detrimental to cold water fisheries where you have a, a lot of that warm water kind of getting, sh you know, discharged right into the river right, right away very quickly. So those are just some of the documented stressors, and we're really, um, really our, our focus of this plan was really looking at the village in particular. The, the town obviously has a lot of both condensed urban lands right here in the village, but then also a big road network of more of the rural type development. And the rural type development outside of the village is definitely uh, important for stormwater. There's a lot of challenges there. As you probably know, just driving around the roads, there's a lot of road erosion going on. There's a lot of challenges with respect to maintaining that infrastructure. And that is a challenge which is being addressed by a new permitting requirement, the municipal roads general permit that the town is going to have to meet. Uh, and so really, and, and that's a permit that's uh, being administered by the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. It's going to be requiring the town to really take a look at the road network, the ditches, the culverts. And so that, because of that other process going on, we really wanted to focus this plan on the, um, on the, on the village itself. And I haven't mentioned this before, but this is, this is a non-regulatory plan. And so this is a voluntary plan that we're basically just trying to 
get ahead of it a little bit and get things queued up for future funding through the state. And this is really the first step in that process. And so, um, you know, just to kind of describe what that what that process looked like. So we we initially met uh, here, I believe, on the 12th of January in 2018. And really, the initial step was was to understand what was uh, what's been done so far. So what's out there in terms of existing information. And one of the big things that was here was um, the the infrastructure. So the catch basins and the pipes and the outfall points where that stormwater goes has already been mapped. Was already mapped by the state, and I think that was in 2016. And so that was. Uh, the state's actually done that for a lot of municipalities statewide at this point, and that's really, really valuable data because that saves us the time from having to figure out, you know, where the water flows, say, from the village green, there's catch basins all around that, where does that go? Having that data already, we can understand that a lot of that drains down the hill and discharges by the bridge, uh, where a lot of the village stormwater ends up, and that's one of the sites that we're looking at for an improvement project down there, which I'm going to get to. But that was probably the biggest piece of information that we had. Um, so we kind of went through that existing data, and we did what's called this uh, desktop assessment, an initial pro uh, project identification. So it's really just looking at kind of the, big, the, the overall view of the village, looking at where the infrastructure goes, where those outfall points are, and coming up with bullet points in terms of like, hey, these are going to be really good projects. Potentially, we want to we want to evaluate these. We want to evaluate these further. So we came up with 19 of those sites, and and if you want to know, I'm not going to go through all these sites, but they're going to be in the final plan. And if anybody wants to see them, there's also going to be a map. On the right is just a, just you know, there's a zoomed in map on in the plan where you can see exactly which one of what all those 19 sites are, but they're all all around the village, and <clears throat> we. Uh, basically put those 19 sites through a ranking process. So what we wanted to figure out was, of these 19 sites, what, which ones, are, what sites, you know, not all sites are equal, which one of these sites are, are most valuable, and where should the town, uh, and where should we be kind of focusing our, our energy for the future, in terms of taking the next steps with designing these uh, sites and moving them along towards implementation. So <clears throat> going through that ranking process, we came up with, uh, we, we cut basically four of those sites away. Said, so, you know, these are just, for, what, for, for various reasons, they're not good projects. They're not, they don't really have a, you know, by implementing, spending money on these projects, we're not gonna be um, improving water quality or some other benefit. It's not gonna be aesthetic benefit to the town or somehow help the town in some other way. So we cut out four of those projects and we got to 15. And then uh, during the summer, we met with the project stakeholders again here, and we basically got down to uh, five priority sites. And so at that point, we determined, you know, these are really the top five sites in the village that are most, that we really want to focus our, our efforts on because essentially what the end of our contract was to take three of those five and actually produce the designs for those. And so that's what I brought along here, um, which I'm happy to answer questions after I talk or after the meeting, we can look at these. Uh, but there's basically three designs, so three out of those five sites we ended up designing. And um, you know, when we selected the, the top three sites, really at that point we needed to uh, conduct some outreach because we needed to understand what the issues were. And there were definitely some issues, some hurdles that we had to overcome for those projects. And when I get to the top three projects, I'll, sh I'll tell you what some of those challenges were. And then we modeled the projects because uh, we really wanted to get a better understanding of really what's the benefit because when the process is, at this point, we're gonna take this information and then submit for future funding or the town will or Ann or Mary will and putting that into the state, they really want to know how much phosphorus or how much nitrogen or how much, how many pounds of sediment or how much volume of stormwater does this, is this going to manage? They, because that's how they basically apply their funding is they want to know that this is going to be a really valuable project. So we needed to break out that information and, and the way that, that you get that information is through modeling. 
So <clears throat> we, we spent a lot of time uh, modeling the projects both for water quality and also the, and, and also the quantity, so the runoff modeling. And then we prepared uh, some preliminary cost estimates. I'm going to show you those as well. And one of, the, one of the key things is we looked at the permitting issues because these projects all had uh, some permitting considerations. So we looked carefully at uh, permitting issues both at the state level and some of the other, um, one of the easements I'm thinking of the town park, which I'm going to discuss here in a minute. <coughs> And at this point, uh, the end of October, we kind of, we have basically a, a, a draft final package at this point. And what the package is, is a, is a document plan, which I have a copy of that I brought along. And then with that plan, there's a series of attachments. And all the attachments are the maps, the tables, all the supporting information that went into that. So that's all going to be available to anybody at the town. I assume it could be put on the, the town website or um, you know, it will be available. It's, it's meant to be a working document. And so it's a document that is now in place and it's going to be used to kind of move these projects ahead for, for funding um, through the state. Are there any questions at this point? I can a answer questions at the end too. I just realized I'm done rambling for a lot. I have two questions. It says uh, meeting with project stakeholders. Uh, who does that refer to? Project, the project stakeholders really in this case were the town who we met with directly at the, because the projects were, two of the projects were on town land. Well, actually all three were on town land. Okay. Um, the, the park has some restrictions in terms of the, the, um, the Vermont housing conservation. Um, it's the HCV and the HCV. HCV. various set of restrictions and so they were not present at those meetings but we did a lot of back and forth with those groups to understand what the impacts to their uh, to their easements were by this project and so they would be the other big stakeholder I think in this in, in, in the process my other question is is, is back you, you, you refer to regulatory that, that, that the idea here is to kind of to get a, a jump start um, how can we be sure that there are going to be regulations added in that aren't being considered now? Sure, that's always that's always a, a possibility. I mean, in in, in, in the, and it's likely that in the future, I mean, the state is going to be go, going down in terms of the scale of what would be regulated. So it's possible that some of these areas that we've designed for will be regulated in the future. But I think that um, without knowing all the specifics, I think that we've what we've designed is really kind of like a best fit. It, it, it's really the best you can do for the site. So I think that regardless of what those state requirements would be in the future, I think that you know we've we've maxed out what the site can handle. So I think we would meet or exceed what would be done in the future. Yeah, or required. Yeah. So, so yes, end of October. Okay, so just to give you an idea, and I have some maps, but just to introduce you to the top three projects. So the first one is the town park. And so uh, the town park is, a, is an underground chamber system. So if you think of a leach field for, for wastewater, that's what we're proposing here. It's an underground series of chambers where water flow comes in, it fills up the chambers, and then it basically leaches down into the soil below. And the water that it's, that it's getting is actually from uh, the stormwater line that runs down Route 100 and it discharges right at the bridge. And that collects, I'm going to show you a map, but that collects a large chunk of developed lands in, in the village here. And so just to give you the specs on that one, 6.6 .6 acres of drainage area, so 424,500 cubic feet per year of water would be managed in that. 17,000 plus pounds of sediment per year, about seven pounds of phosphorus and about 21 pounds of nitrate. And the last two, I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, seven pounds, but it's actually a lot in terms of when you're, when you're measuring the way that the state is calculating pollutants. This is a very big, big project. 
Um, when you said the town park, I noticed you're saying it's under the preliminary cost, project cost, it says Riverbrook Park, which is different it's than the park, the, the park in the village. It's not, the park. He's not talking about the new park, not the, the, park. the He's the not main talking park. about the park in the village. No, no, no. no, no. I not. think so, but he said town park, so mm -hmm. that's what I think. I've been referring, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry. so it's Riverbrook Park okay. I've been referring yeah. to. North end of town. And the north end of town, correct. Yep. Um, yep. So then the, t the town office, actually, that site is another, it's a very similar type system. It, and, it's, and it's actually right on the, on the river side. Let's see, I'm turned around right over here. Yes. On this side of the building. So this site, if, if you're aware, the, so the parking lot, a lot of the parking lot drains off towards the river. There's a small river right along the side of the parking lot right here. Right. And there's also a stormwater pipe network which drains up further up School Street. So we're basically proposing to pick a lot of that up and bring it into another system uh, similar right along the river right here. I'm going to show you a map of that one. <laughs> Third one, the town garage. And the town garage is a, it's an underground type system which is intended to basically remove the oils and remove uh, a lot of the sediment which from the yard surface itself and that's uh, much smaller I think but it was intended to be more of a best low like a, a what I would say is a low cost solution for a site which really probably could use more improvement but we we're careful not to want to overdo it in terms of the level of complexity on that site because that site is as I understand it, potentially somewhat in flux in terms of, you know, the future of that site. If it, in our, uh, in our, so in our view, it didn't really make sense to, to, to invest a ton of money into that site. Um, but it made sense to design something that could really kind of get in the ground relatively cheaply and then start, you know, do, having some, some, some decent benefits. So that's kind of what we designed on that site. So yeah, you can see the cost. 300,000 um, down to 67,000. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, the figures you have for um, the phosphorus <laughs> and the drain, are those all estimated just based on the acreage, or were there any monitoring? Were, were those figures based on any type of real monitoring, or are they just estimated? They're, they're based on modeling. And so they're based okay. on, right, so no, no field measurements. Okay. The, the modeling that we use is is really the best available modeling. It is based on real science and it's based on real projects mm -hmm. and, and actually sampling. It's but, based on but not specific sampling, to not those here. sites. No. Okay. So the the park site, let's see, it's a little hard to see. You can see the, the purple boundary right here. So uh, we're here. Here's Route 100. And so everything within the purple boundary, you can see these the red lines right here. So that's a storm. That's an existing stormwater line. So all this area within this purple boundary gets collected in this catch basin network, and it ends up coming out right at the river, right here. Here's the bridge. Here's the stream that runs through right here. And so our site is right here next to the fire station. And the idea with that site is it's it's going to be intercepting this red stormwater storm water line. The other thing uh, to note is that there's potentially going to be a future sidewalk project here. And we wanted to consider how these two projects could work together. And currently, a lot of the water from Route 100 actually goes north, and it sheds off through these parcels. And it's actually creating quite a bit of erosion as it runs through here, and it runs down the bank, and it ends up down here by the, by the town garage. And so what we're anticipating with the design work that we did was that the sidewalk that, was going, that could potentially be built here in the future would create a dam for that water, because you, you would need a curb. And so any of the water flow, which is presently now sheet flowing down, would actually be collected in the stormwater line and brought down into our system <coughs> to, to manage it. And so the, the net benefit would be, by creating a sidewalk here, you'd be eliminating this condition where you have this water flow running down through these buildings and creating this erosion, which, which is 
not only a maintenance issue, but it's also a water quality issue because it's causing uh, some erosion. And that, that, that erosion is ending up in the pipe and it's going right to the river down here. There's a question about that. Um, just wondering about, you know, in those areas there are driveways that go in there. So you know, you know, once we have a nice sidewalk with curbing that directs it mostly on that, on that line, there's going to be some areas still that will, you know, there'll be openings for the water to go through. So is there some other kind of infrastructure or something that would capture that so it didn't continue going down that way? I would think some additional catch, strategically placed catch basins. You know, you, you're, you're absolutely right. You wouldn't be able to dam at all. But I think with, with catch basins kind of right at the, you know, at the corners so that most of the flow and also just the, the recontouring of the road kind of directing into the catch basins, I feel like you could still capture a bunch of it. And maybe with some shimming or something, I'm just thinking if this would work just with having like a rise or something at the, at the, at that driveway inlet so then you could position the catch basin, right? So does that all make sense in terms of the, mm -hmm. the land area draining into this? Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you look at it, this is a big chunk of the village that would come into this thing. Uh, I've already went through that. Yeah, so this is just basically looking at where, so you guys are probably more familiar, familiar with this location, but it's basically right, uh, right adjacent to the fire department there in the green space. So this is a plan, I have a, the design plan here, but just to show you what this means. You know, here's your stormwater line. These are all the chambers, and they sit, they sit under the ground, and basically the grass gets restored right on top. So you would not, no one would know they're there, except for the fact that we would need to take out some trees. If this, the two trees, which are, I guess there's three trees. There's this one right here and those two. What we've talked about is potentially replanting closer to the river because there really is a need at this site to kind of improve the buffering in the river because the buffer uh, vegetation closer to the river would be beneficial. So it could be that those trees that were lost could be replanted closer, closer to, the, to the river. Um, but other than the trees, basically it would just be a green space and you wouldn't know <coughs> that it's there aside from a manhole, basically like a grate where you access to, to, to maintain it. So the <clears throat> second, second project at the town office, very similar. So again, the purple line is the, is the drainage boundary, so the water that would be collected. So here's, here's where we are, the parking lot, School Street. This red line right here, this is a catch basin and there's a pipe and then the river is over here. So currently everything that drains down School Street this way and this way comes into this catch basin and then gets discharged to the river right here. So what we're pro proposing to do is actually collecting that by means of taking that water and bringing it all the way down here and doing another one of these little systems right down in this little pull-off area that exists right down by the, uh, right next to the building here. Where <coughs> Right now, there's no buffer really at all. The stream is right there. There's kind of some erosion and some debris that's piled there, and it's just not a good situation. Um, so what we're proposing to do is put these chambers in and then basically improve the buffer. So replanting along the river just to basically shade it, help with the erosion. Um, this is what it looks like. This the so. The top one is from the river looking forward. You can see there's a little pull off there. And then the bottom one is looking, so the brook is right over that bank. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. There's a bunch of knotweed there. So it's just a great place to pull that out and do a better planting and then put this system in, which is basically gonna stop all the, the storm water from heading into the river and we'll instead put it in the ground. Um, this is just, and I have, I have a plan right here, but you can just see, here, here are the chambers right here. So we have a, a new pipe running right along right here into the chambers. So this would be no longer, no stormwater wouldn't come out here anymore. It would come down here, come down here. It'd be underground uh, and then it would infiltrate into the soil and not 
discharge the river. So this is what the chambers look like. So <clears throat> you, you basically excavate a hole, you put down stone, and then these chambers come on a truck and they come in pieces. And somebody, the workers basically line them out and they snap together. I've seen one built in like two hours. They actually go together incredibly quickly. Um, the biggest part of it is excavating the hole and dumping a lot of stone in there. It takes a lot of, a lot of material. So the chambers go into place. Stone gets buried around the chambers and soil gets put on top and then you can drive on them, you can do all kinds of things and, and the stormwater is basically just using those as storage and infiltration. And just on the left is a flyer we just did. The one on the right is actually just a stock photo from their website, but the one on the left is from the Cambridge Elementary School where we just uh, designed and we they just recently installed a big system there that manages <clears throat> a big part of the, the Cambridge Elementary School. Um, and so the picture on the right is actually after these went in. So it's just, as I know it's a little hard to see, but it basically just looks, looks like grass. Um, so those chambers are underground now and they're functioning there. So then the, the final of the three is the town garage. So again, here's that pipe I was telling you about with the other site. So what's left, all this water flow that's coming down from the properties right along Route 100, all drains down and it ends up in a swale, in a ditch, and then the red is a pipe. And so all this, all this, you know, relatively dirty surface, because it's a working surface, obviously, these guys are working, they're using it with trucks and a lot of materials and a lot of sediment is getting picked up in this catch basin and it's coming out at a pipe right at the river. And so it's anything that's ending up in that catch basin is just getting flushed into the river right at that point. Um, there's also a material stockpile on the back of the site, which is right up along the river. That's also a big concern. It's you know an issue that we were trying to brainstorm on how to address that. Um, I, can, I can talk a, a little bit about that uh, afterward if people are interested. But the main thing I wanted to describe here is the, uh, this is just a view of the site just to show you. If you look at the middle, you can just see basically the site is right up against the river. <clears throat> no buffer, there's a lot of, what's there for buffer is actually invasive. Um, and so what we're proposing on this site is to basically put in a new pipe that comes along the backside. So anything that currently flows down the road right here, it's flowing overland to the river and creating some erosion right here we would be picking that up. So we'd be taking all that water flow and bringing it into a pipe here. And then we have a, uh, basically a concrete structure right here, which is called a uh, hydrodynamic separator. It's basically a fancy word for when the water comes in, it gets swirled around, swirled around, and all the debris that's in the water gets moved to the center. And then it flows down and it gets trapped in there. And so essentially it creates a, uh, it creates a place for sediment and oils, debris, floatable stuff, cups, cigarette butts, all that stuff gets basically trapped in there. And that would need to be pumped out periodically um, to remain functional. And so that's what's proposed there. So it's a relatively, when I say, you know, $67,000 is still a lot of money, but it's a relatively low cost project. Uh, it's kind of a best fit project for that site. There's probably more that could be done there, but I think it's a good compromise. And really the next steps at this point is, you know, moving these three projects, there is some, some additional design work that needs to be done to get them ready so you could hand them off to somebody to build. So that work would need to be done. Um, and then chasing funding is, is the next step and, and really, this plan gives you the tool to do that because when you put forth grant opportunities referencing that uh, these projects are in the plan and they're ranked high is what the state wants to see in terms of funding these projects because they know that somebody's already took, taken a look and it's not just taking a shotgun approach to say, you know, we want to do this one, but it's, it's been documented in the plan. 
Um, I think I just basically the only other things I could discuss. There are there are several different funding uh, sources out there right now, and so Mary I think is plugged into a lot of those, and the town is as well, and Anne is as well. So they have a lot of experience working with some of these you know the different opportunities. Um, and I think just to find, just to close the loop on the permitting issues, I was talking about, <clears throat> you know, look, making sure all these projects would be feasible. I actually just got the last email today uh, from the VHCB person uh, saying, and this is for the town park, saying that he was on board with it. He mm -hmm. thought it was a great project. So that, so I was really excited. We, we cleared a lot of hurdles with that. Uh, we went through the state people, they took a hard look at it, they had questions, did a lot of back and forth with them, but I think in the end, all three of these projects should be feasible from a permitting standpoint. And so that's good, because obviously you don't want to get to the point of pushing these along and then figuring out that there, you know, there's a permit that's going to be blocking doing the project. So, so that's, I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. Yeah. Yeah, but that separator you've got at the town garage or behind the town garage, how big, how big is that one? I mean, what's it, how many pounds or how many gallons will it hold before they have to clean it? Uh, that's a good question. It's a six foot diameter concrete structure. But how deep? <clears throat> About six feet, eight feet. I can get you. I don't. I don't remember. No, I'm just exact. asking a question. Yeah, because yeah. I know that we've worked on a couple. Have you? And they can't afford to pump them. Can't afford to pump them. No. So they're dropping a sump pump in it and pumping them and shoveling them out. Are you saying a town or is it a private? One's owner? a town and one's a yeah. uh, public municipality. I mean, it's actually good. I'm glad you raised the issue because I didn't talk about maintenance at all. So. All three of these systems will need maintenance. Um, it's just I'm not trying to throw rocks here. I'm just no. saying they can't afford it, so yeah. they, they're not. You need a you need a factor truck. Yeah, right. you need and a factor truck. But they're charging big money because they don't like to put trash in their back in their sewer bumpers. That's what the pumping is a vac a factor truck. It's a factor truck, just like you would clean a catch basin. Mm -hmm. So. To describe the chambers, the giant vacuum. Yes, the cha the chambers have one of the tubes where the water first comes in is wrapped in fabric, and so nothing gets out of that. So that one just over time will fill up with sediment, and these are big chambers, and so it's not going to be a year. Uh, Correct. It's going to be quarterly, probably. Well, no, I think it's going to be several years before you'll fill it up. I'm not. Oh no, about, I meant the, your trash. Yes, I'm going. Sorry, I'm going to a different. I'm going to a different one now. I'm going to the the chambers. Bigger one too. And so, every co and, it, and it's going to depend. Somebody's going to have to go, and there's an observation port, and you look, and you'll see if the sediment is building up, and when it's building up to like, you know, a third or half full of that chamber, it's past time to get it cleaned out and you will have to have somebody come in with a with a back truck and they basically stick a nozzle down with a jet and they they suck out all the sediment and they do the same thing with that correct with that downstream defender it's a manhole mm -hmm. put their back down and pump it out so but what they, happens to the stuff that they pump out they truck it away but where does it go from there goes to the landfill or the wastewater treatment the facility? wastewater treatment doesn't like it yeah I mean, to be honest with the, it's kind of the, there's no getting around it. Everybody is. No, I, I fully understand it. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's an expensive, it's an expensive cost. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a necessary, uh, it's an ex evil. Evil. Everybody in, you know, it's, it's everybody's main concern. Well, how do I maintain, you know, we don't have the, the ability to maintain this. Um, so ideally in the future, as more of this, infrastructure gets put into place, towns can share resources, you know, if there's other, these systems somewhere, I don't, you know, you get somebody down for a half a day and clean out four or five systems, you can do it. I know we're, we just put one in Warren, uh, where we have like three other ones potentially in other towns in the Matter Valley, so they don't have a vector, they're going to be 
in the same boat. So these are all recent installations, so they haven't experienced the that. There's one at Warren Elementary School that was just put in earlier this summer, yeah. And they also put in a bunch of dry wells, similar maintenance factoring this summer, so we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Get in the factor business, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a big, big additional investment. Like the growing industry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you have an idea about what it would cost if they um, pump out the unit at the town garage? I'm going to throw out a wild guess: mm -hmm. fifteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. well, that's not too bad. And that's going to have to be done quarterly, isn't it? Would you say? No. So every no. couple of years. It, yeah. I mean, if if you really want to be on it, I would say every year. But mm -hmm. if you don't, every other year. It, it, it all depends how much junk is getting in there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it can be designed with, you know, the catch basin that's ahead of it. <clears throat> if, it if it's designed with a deep sump that's, uh, so that a lot of the junk kind of gets caught before it goes into that thing, mm -hmm. okay. you can kind of save, you know, more storage yeah, so, there, yeah. less, less time so you have to actually Pump it out. Yeah. Well, inspections. I mean, can the, the town is not would not do the inspections and we hire this out? I think the towns it could be designed with a, a little port on the chambers. Basically, you take a you take a stadia rod, right? And, and that's all it is. It's not anything. No, you just want to make sure you know there isn't standing standing water in there three days after a storm, or, you know, that would be an indication that yeah. something's wrong. So say in a situation like Irene, when it's just inundated, I assume it would it would fill up with water and then the rest would just, just run off past it. It wouldn't, would it? Would that tend to just fill it right up with sediment or, or who knows? Who, who knows? I mean, I've definitely thought hard, really hard about that because mm -hmm. I know especially the one at the, the park Mm -hmm. is it's it's obviously it's flooded before um so we were really concerned about that we think you know talking with the 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 people in the rivers department at dec i think where it is it's as protected as it can be mm -hmm. in terms of like where it is on that site if it were to get totally inundated um i'm sure there's going to be sediment that's going to end up in there yeah and it's going to have to be totally but it would out. be in that first initial fabric wrapped chamber it wouldn't trash the whole right. unit, right? Because that's the only way the water can get in. Yeah. Um, and so if that got set, you know, filled up, then this stuff would just run off and right. do what it does now. Yeah. yeah. Is there any uh, statewide experience or history to fall back on as far as cleaning these systems? Or is it just too new? There are there are a number of them in the ground right now. I would say, for the most part, there are ones where there is a permit, a state permit on the site that <clears throat> requires the owner of the site to inspect and maintain the system at least once a year. So where these are put in with a permit condition, you're basically required every year to go out and look and evaluate. So the state actually does have a lot of data on it. Okay. Um, is, there, is there any over 10 years old? Yeah. Is there a few, a few of them in the floodplain? I mean, I'm calling this one in the floodplain down mm -hmm. in the park. It's in some floodplain, right? It's not in the hundred year. No, we but sure it, to, yeah, it's, but it's going, definitely a flood it's going to get flooded. It, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, the design life of these things is, you know, 30 or 40 years. And so you take a chance. I mean, it's it's a, it's a risk for sure. I mean, there's no question it is. Um, but there are, you no, know, there's definitely these that are kind of in like similar locations. And there's ones that have been in the ground. Like we did one for a V-Trans uh, lot in Morrisville three years ago. I don't think that they've, I'm actually, I know they haven't pumped it out yet and it's working fantastically. It's working really well. Um, so I don't have any hard data on it. I just, I talked to the guys and they've said they've never seen it overflow. They've never had issues with it. Um, they check it for the sediment. The sediment accumulation is very minor. So, I mean, that's 
that's my anecdotal. Does the sediment you feel as if, of course, it comes in to one end, does the sediment you assume going to go like this? Right. It will, it, you, you'd have more. Just like a leach field. It's right. You'd have more of that inlet, and then it would. Yeah. Because the stuff is heavy, it's not going to float. Yeah, and you have on that tube that's wrapped in fabric, there's actually, you have a manhole at either end with a 24 inch pipe. And then, so that's how you get in to maintain it. So you can access it from both sides and you use a 24 inch pipe because that's the easiest way for somebody getting the proper tool to, to jet it. Any other So we put it on our Christmas list. <laughs> yep. You think Santa Claus will bring it to us? <laughs> <laughs> Never has to ask. <laughs> You've asked for bigger things, huh? <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to say a few words about um, your ideas for containing the cell pile? Sure. So we, we did look at the fact that the back of the pile is sloughing off into the river. And one of the, one of the ideas that we looked at was creating some more, some degree of retainage. So basically making a higher wall of concrete blocks, which would do a better job just containing that pile. Um, and what the feedback we got from the state is that, you know, by doing that, I think we would be looking at additional floodplain concerns by creating, you know, additional structures. And so I don't, um, you know, the other kind of more passive idea was just to basically reshape the pile. If, if it was possible after we did, so the connection that I'm, I was talking about with that new pipe coming through, um, <coughs> potentially if that work was done and there was a way to basically relocate some of the equipment that's currently kind of being stored around where that new catch basin is. So on the, it would be on the, is it on the east side of the shed? There, it, it seems like you could elongate the pile a little more so that it could be pulled a little closer uh, away from the river. I know it's, it's a really highly constrained site, but I was just trying to think about, instead of trying to build up a wall, if you could just kind of reshape the pile so that it's longer and skinnier and so that you could just have a little more room between that and the river because it, currently the way it is is that, is that pile is just continuing to slough off on the back backside, um, right, right, and the material's basically just going right in the river and it's just the fact that it's just so close. Yeah, but then it's gonna freeze. You don't have a longer, a narrower pile, it's gonna freeze more. Mm -hmm. Correct? Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I think tomorrow we'll start. Yeah, I look at it, there won't be well there. Anybody go look again? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a definite issue there, but. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's, ideally, it would be somewhere else, but I understand yeah. Yeah. there is no somewhere else. So, what about the. Hopefully, I'm more concerned about the salt shed being two feet too low. Mm -hmm. And drainage coming into it. Yeah, yeah. Runs, right, runs right through it. Yeah. I think that's more important. So there are grants for. But I that. don't think you want to dig down the back of that building either. What's that? I don't think you want to dig down the back side of that building. For the new pipe? You're saying? Yeah. The building's already settling. I think if you dig down through there, it may collapse that. What's your setback from the sewer from the town garage? You might might be better off to come down the front of the building. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, along the front. Versus and you can accomplish the same thing maybe without caving. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that would get you a setback from your sewer. Yeah, I don't recall exactly where. Where is the, can you... Where is the sewer? In the right next door. South. Uh, oh, here it is, right here. Southwest. No, corner. no, the sewer of the building. Oh, yeah. The where, where does the line come off? Do we know? In the middle. In the middle. Somewhere out the back. Out the back. 
towards the river. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Well, that would have to be, that would have to be worked think, out. I wouldn't think you'd want to put it in the back because you, you wouldn't have any separation from your sewer. Sure. I mean, it can, you, you know, like you're saying, you could go, you could come around the building too. You can come around the front side of the building potentially. I mean, that, you know, that. Just to be clear, too, this is the, you know details like that for all right, of these that would have to have to be worked out. No, I understand. Yeah. I'm just thinking. But yeah, I mean, if it makes more sense to come around, you know, basically, just come around the front and tee in mm. there. Mm. I think that I think that would be good. Yeah, and you know, I looked at. I was hoping that the soil conditions would actually be pretty good here, but they're not, from what I saw. Mm. There's a lot of buried material there. So there was a sawmill there. Out here? Yeah, I was no, looking at us. Town garage. Oh, okay. There's a sawmill. Yeah. But the other two sites have good material for putting the water back into the ground. The park and right along the edge of the building here is good, mm -hmm. good gravel. So. So the next um, step you had identified the town garage as the, the really the first low-hanging fruit, least expensive. And so we'd be looking at grant money to try and do something about that. Yeah. Maybe the most important if that's yeah. as close to the river. Yeah. They're yeah. contaminating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Mary and I have had a you know, one preliminary conversation about what the possibilities are. You know, depending on what you want to do and your timing, um, you know, keep having that conversation. Well, it really all depends on what kind of money is out there to okay. do it. Well, we can put a proposal in front of you pretty quick. I think we've got some ideas about mm -hmm. grants that could be coming up soon. So mm -hmm. would that be the best next step is to let you know what we find and you guys approve yeah. it? Or, okay. Yeah. <coughs> we can do that. Does any of this design change if the town garage moves, which it's not went yet. off in the future? I want to stay on the key top. We keep hearing requests to move our town garage. Right. Yeah, I mean. Well, it would still be addressing runoff coming down to that area, so it wouldn't be. It would. The waste. It you would. You sort of have a legacy there, even and the town garage moved, right? Because of all the activity that's happened. Right. Until that's what I was just, I was thinking through the question. Yeah, and really the infrastructure would probably still stay in terms of the piping and the fact that there yeah. is this stormwater outfall. And so, yeah, it wouldn't be a waste. Yeah, to, and to, water's still going to go down there, even right. if the garage moves. Yeah. Right. You're still getting water down, down the road and also mm -hmm. through the, the ditch and then that goes into the culvert yeah. line. So yeah, it would still be worthwhile. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll, uh, while he's packing up, we'll move on into our regular meeting and um, Ask if anyone has any additions to the agenda for tonight. Susie. Um, we'll no, just let me know what they are so we can get them on the, you know, addition. Um, each year I talk to the select board yeah. to talk about filing in such a way so that we can get the snow is not uh, knocking down the fence, cleaning the parking lot in my yard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've had good luck with it as long as we remind each other that it's going on. All right, well, it's a good thing that Cooter's sitting right behind you because he's the guy to talk to about it. <laughs> well, we can build a new fence in the spring. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just have some, some questions about policy. Um, um, in terms of the town clerk area on uh, election day. Mm -hmm. Blocking of roads specifically. Okay. 
All right. Anybody else have any other additions? Then we can come back to that. Mm -hmm. But just get it get it all on the on the paper here. Nope. Then um, then we'll go back to you. Um, what's yeah? What, what did you want oh, to talk okay. about? Um, you know, Russell usually talks to somebody, but Russell's living up in Marshfield now. So um, if the snow gets plowed that way, it becomes a problem because each year we have to replace part of the fence. And it hasn't been that bad. It's been one or two boards um, every other year or so. But if it gets plowed down this way and then over, which right. is how they it's usually have been doing it, way. yeah. There's no way we can get 100% of it. Oh, I know that. I know that. But there's a difference between that and having a 12-foot wall there. Yeah. You know, you know I'm, not, I'm not crazy. I'm just, you know, we want to work together. That's we all. As much as we can. <laughs> and, and, we can it. and as you know, if the fence gets knocked down, I'll come back and we'll work something out. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, my other question is, is that uh, on election day, it was a very large bus parked here which my understanding is that the right of the people, they were represent, uh, representing their representatives, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I spent a lot of time on my porch, and a lot of people would be coming down School Street ready to pull in, and they'd back up because they could, it was confusing to them mm -hmm. as to what to do, and then they'd come around, and it, it just, Logistically, it was not a good situation. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I did speak with Joanne about it. I guess a number of people did. Um, um, I agree. It was it was an awkward situation, and I would, yeah, you know, yeah. And I'm um, just wondering if there's a way of preventing that in the future, or if it's just a matter of it's just the way I, it is. I think it's a, a matter of communication and. And getting with the um, people. I mean, and everyone has a right to park yes. a vehicle and, and have their political signs on it. Yeah. You know, if they want. That was um, a no, rather large vehicle. Another yeah. thing that will help is I I put it out to other clerks to try to get policies on how they handle this in their um, polling areas. <clears throat> and once I get a few samples, we we'll need to contact the BCA and get them together for a meeting and maybe the select board too to yeah. just create a written policy that can be um, handed out to any future uh, people. So what VT? BCA, which is the Board of Civil Authority. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be the Justices of the Peace um, select board. Uh, so. There's a little bit of irony here in that if it made it awkward for people to get in to vote, because in talking with the fellow that had the bus there, his intention was to be stationed here and be ready to go and get people who couldn't get here to vote. He was offering rides to people to come here and vote, but it yeah, was. Um, would have been better off with something smaller. I, well, I, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had a pickup truck too. Yeah, I had a pickup truck too. But anyway, um, okay, thank you. Yeah, always room for improvement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on to the minutes from the um, last meeting of Monday, October 22nd. And I didn't see any problems with them. I, I them. move that we accept these as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we also have the minutes for the um, special emergency select board meeting on October 30th to deal with the um, amending the line of credit. And that looked clear to me. I move to accept those minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Yep. And we've got him. We've got those. Joan, you already um, talked a lot. Is that all she has for oh, updates? She's talking to the other She's all right. She's in the other one. Don't have any from the consular. Cooter, um, you ready for winter? No. No? <laughs> but it's coming. We have a broken truck. You know, oh, no, broke, no. Oh, the newest one, right? The new truck. The <sighs> yeah. We don't have a hydraulic pump oh, operator at this point. Done. 
Uh, so has that been Wednesday? We go to Morrisville with it. Yeah. PTO is showing. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. Better be. It's it's like yeah. Under. <coughs> is Fairfield? It's a little electric solenoid. I know that's a problem, but he told me if, he if I touched it, they probably weren't going to warranty it, so I didn't touch it. Mm. This is Fairfield. Yeah. And there helps all the deer hunting. <laughs> right. Yeah. The yeah. odds are just against us. Yeah. So you're expecting to get that fixed by the end of the week? By the end of the day, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something they? Is that something they would do that day and go up Wednesday and come back, or do you have to leave it up there? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and it might be very expensive and it might not even work, but they look at all the different ways that they can attack the problem depending on what they determine the problem is, what's making that soap fail, um, and then come up with different different alternatives and then we would get help figuring out which alternative is the most appropriate one to do. And then the next, you know, grant round, so in what, what that would be 2020, would be to then ask for money for actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. But we do have a grant for the engineering part of it. We just haven't gotten started yet. So. In the meantime, I would like I would still like to um, have some uh, photo documentation of what it does look like over that bank so that we would have a benchmark to say, I, I, you know, I, I wanted that in the springtime um, so that we could look at it from every six months to see how it's holding up. And I know that means walking up and down that god awful bank, but I think that would be very valuable um, since we're looking at 2020. And when the engineers come in, we can look and see for ourselves what we saw versus what they're they're doing yeah. as well. So we pick a day to take a walk up the bank. Forest knows too much. I would I would walk it with you. I don't know. I just you know, it's, 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 if somebody was to build a house, say in McCoy's, mm -hmm. you know, they got a pretty good nut to crack. And I don't think Brook Street's the road to take to get the material there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personally. And I don't think Cooter wants Brook Street to get used like that. No, it has already been a, 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 a trying summer at times already. Yeah. yeah. With those of us that do honor. Yeah, that, that, that well, honor. There's a, right. there's a there's few that don't honor. Oh there. my God, yeah. there's a, so there's, yeah. There's two trucks the other night. I back plates. Took pictures of one coming off Bethel Mountain of 53 footer just this they week. Uh, they come all the way out. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, and they go back over. And they go yeah. back over. Yeah. You know. Thank they, God for GPS. I was going to say they're GPS. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, just, I think maybe a bigger sign at the bottom. I don't know. Actually, maybe, no. Mark Busser to goes have there. an engineer go up there and take some, instead of bench trying to take some shots, mm -hmm. great shots, and then go back. It's yeah, I, we, that, yeah. That would be we, better we than That would be better than pictures. Yeah, nothing against pictures. We, we, we need to document the progress of what's right going on. Angle. In the right sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because no. we were, we, you know, Dan said he had walked it, and, and we believe what he said when he recommended that we, mm -hmm. you know, close that road down. But I myself have never looked down over the bank. I, I could be horrified, or I could scratch my head. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. I tried to do it, but I was really uncomfortable. <laughs> I tried to walk up and you know, just like... I know, maybe you get a hundred of us going through there. <laughs> and I tried to come from below, but I just... But it's it was really pretty wild. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's also not safe to try to walk up. You know. No. I, I, I just think, I, I just think, you know, I, I didn't know and yeah. what's being done, and I now that Cooter's not had much. some time to, you know, <laughs> well, no, he's got another another problem coming, and it'd be nice, you know. But. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's out there, and it's it won't let us forget about it. That's no, sure. I, yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm not yeah. no. trying Thank to you. be a nuisance. No, no. Library or is the audit? Do the library? Um, we've got a contract here for the winter maintenance on the um, Jesse library. Jesse Marco is going to do the library winter maintenance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the acknowledgement of arbitration in all the contract documents. Oh, the, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. So make sure you guys sign both pages. Why are you, you signing? I'm sorry. It's a um, it's a contract that BLCT has given us for work 
that is being done by people who have no workers comp. In this case, it's a young guy who's doing the library winter maintenance. Okay, so um, if you sign a contract for the work for library maintenance work. Yeah. Yeah. And also we have here um, the, management letter. the management letter for Pace and Holly regarding the upcoming audits of the town books. And, and you're signing that too? Yes. Okay. got a letter to the board from Janice McCann um, request, requesting that in future her property bordering Brook Street not be mowed by the town or its contractors and she will assume responsibility for her property management and they, we tried to make this request last year and then they mowed it just like in Harlands, they got on it pretty quick and, and mowed it anyway. But um I need to put the flag out, it's my fault. Well okay. Yeah. Well so anyway she's right on it. Come here and say something. <laughs> okay. I think I put a copy of this in your your file, Kuda, just so we can stick it in roadside mowing for future. Yeah. Take the guy up yeah, and. If you Harley, actually, if, yeah, if you'd want to just give me like a something that I can put in a folder so that when we do roadside mowing next time, I can give it right to the guy. Yeah. You know, we can at least maybe take him for a ride and show him where not to go. That that might be more helpful. Or you know, even a notice maybe in the paper or something like. A couple weeks for you know, a month right. before. We month do usually do that, but it's, yeah. That it, very quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it happened pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it happened pretty quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully next year. Right. All right, so in, in terms of the um, Brookfield service and the school generator, we still have, what, $238 credit As soon with as them. I get the bill, that will be gone. All right. They had to come out um, okay. last week. So we're going to use that and see what the balance is afterwards, and then we'll evaluate whether or not we want to um, sign this contract with them or in investigate other options. We're forward. furthering that down the road. Yep. Get the can down the road a little bit, use up the credit. And and that is that. Thank you all for, for coming out. I'm going to pay some bills. So, Harlan, did you forget to put something on the agenda? What's new in bingo? Say what? What's new in bingo? What's new in bingo? People are hunting out there. Yeah, yeah. That's the